Tishmish, everyone, and welcome to the Tishmish special <laughs> of EastEnders Weekly Podcast. Yay, season's greetings. Happy Hanukkah. I forget. Happy Tishmish. Happy Tishmish, obviously. That's all there is. Oh, they're, they're, they're the That's only, all we're celebrating. They're the official holidays. We're celebrating the week of Tish. Hmm. Um, so, yes, very exciting. We had five episodes this week. Six Lots episodes. of content. Six? Well, if you make the hour long, it's oh, a yeah. double episode. Lots of content. Six episodes. I did feel insulted when it started off and there was no Sharon on the first episode of <laughs> Tishmas Week. But it's fine, she uh, did appear. She more than made up the uh, <laughs> the lack of Sharon at the beginning of the week. She did. So yeah, we are here to talk about the Christmas week of EastEnders, the big, big week of the year, mm. um, which is obviously between the 23rd and 27th of December. Yes, big, big week. My name is Alex, by the way. Yes, hello. Hello, and I believe you're Ben. Yeah, that's correct. Mitchell, like Ben Mitchell. Mm-hmm. I'm Alex, as in Alex the market stall. <laughs> the one that Ronnie slept with. Yeah, yeah. The one from Poland, was he? I forget now. Yeah, he had a wife, didn't he? He had good Secret hair. Wife. I remember he had good hair. Mm. And he always wore that long coat that seemed to like <laughs> drift behind him as he walked. Like a... Pa- like, yes. Anyway, it's been... It's a, it's a big... It's a big... It's not only been a big week for EastEnders, it's been quite a big week for us as well. Mm-hmm. We have. We teased an announcement for the past few weeks. Mm. Are we ready? Time. Are we ready? Are we ready to reveal? Mm. We're doing like a half reveal, a half launch. Well, it's, this is a soft launch, <laughs> and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna slowly, as the weeks progress, up until our hundredth episode, have the full launch. So. Mm. Here Just we go. To get everyone ready, really, isn't it? So, any eager or keen people may have noticed that our Facebook and our YouTube channel has changed today, and a new name has appeared. It uh, now says Wolford Weekly. Yes, and a new logo. And a new logo. That's because, as of Wednesday the 15th of January, our podcast will be the Wolford Weekly Podcast. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a complete name change, a complete overhaul. Um, well, it's Richie Scott did. got in touch. She's not happy with us. Gotta change the name. <laughs> She's just not <laughs> happy with us at all. We're getting a wrist slap left, right and centre. So yeah, we thought episode 100, good excuse. Yeah, a bit of a celebration. Let's, why not celebrate by just changing our identity? <laughs> So this is the timeline, just so you guys can keep up to date with us. So the name change will officially happen on Wednesday, the 15th of January, when we will be releasing our annual review of the year, where we'll talk about 2019 of EastEnders. Mm-hmm. So with just... our reveals from our envelopes we packed yes. away last year. So this again, this is a tease for our that as well. We did predictions last year, so see how accurate Ben and I are. I can't remember anything that I predicted, so it'd be really interesting mm-hmm. to see I can that. remember some of mine, but not a lot. Indeed. So if you're subscribed to us on a podcast app, you will notice that on the 15th of January, when the podcast downloads automatically onto your device, it will show Wolford Weekly, not EastEnders Weekly. Mm. Similar, but not the same. Yes, similar, but not copywritten. But we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> then um, our first full episode of Wolford Weekly will be our 100th episode which is on the 19th of January. Um, again, if you want to give us a shout out, send us an audio clip. We've asked for you to send some audio clips to us. Yeah, we've got some mm-hmm. lined up. Send them to us. Say how you found us, if you enjoy the show, what you enjoy about the show. Make it about 30 seconds and we promise we'll try to put it into the show on our 100th episode on the 19th of January. Then our Twitter and Instagram will also be updated on the 19th of January. So from the that big one. So from that day our Twitter and Instagram will have a whole new identity, a whole new everything. So Yeah, so people can't throw us abuse by going at East End's week anymore. Yeah. Because we won't see it. <laughs> yeah, we'll be like, who's that? <laughs> I don't know who that is. Now, not only are we changing our identity with our social media, we've also and this is launched today, have a website. Mm. So if you type into your little URL <laughs> www wolfordweekly.com and there's a whole website with news reviews our podcasts yeah, all our features in a little place all our features and i believe there's a special feature for christmas ben yeah we've got a weekly quiz mm. libby fox's degree of excellence has been upgraded from a game on the podcast to an actual segment on the website Mm -hmm. so there'll be a new quiz every week and the first one is a quiz of the year it is again we didn't steal this from metro (laughs) Metro... one of the questions is the same as the metro quiz i'm so annoyed so if you did well on metro quiz you might do well on (laughs) us with at least one of the questions it's just very difficult but their one question is the same Mm. but we we had we've done it weeks ago yeah, we, we've been... So I didn't copy anything. This has been happening in the background for about two and a half months. And um, I would just like to put a shout out quickly to at the Quality Dan, who has really helped us out big time with getting this all organised and mm. sorted out. So thank Wolford you. Wolford Central, he runs. Uh, yeah, so at Quality Dan, Wolford Central, 
find him on Twitter and follow them because they're they're good guys and uh, they they helped us out big time with this. As I said, this has been bubbling along in the background for the last two yeah. months. So that's the news. My new name is Wolford Weekly. Mm-hmm. To get used to it. Yeah. So get you. <laughs> You move on. And to get you used to it, to go into our next section, we're going to use a little t- jingle from Wolford Weekly. Oh, how lively. More of that on our 100th episode. <laughs> That's right. Um, so we're going to start talking about Whitney, Leo, Callum and Ben, the continuation of The End of Ballum, mm. where he's gone off, Callum has. Yeah, he's, Don't he's... Know, we really know where he's gone, do we? did say did he or did he say well he said he was going to see old army mates but i didn't believe uh, him because that's, that's what he said to Stuart. but then when ben asked him he was like i don't know i'm just gonna go and find myself <laughs> basically what i think callum's doing he's come out recently went mm. straight into a relationship mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're gonna have ho callum <laughs> yes we are grinder ho callum. phrase ho <laughs> face <laughs> that must be it mustn't it don't you think yeah he's off to he's off to some haunt and just gonna go for it screw around let's just say <laughs> But I mean, I can't blame Callum. He has he did go from a wedding to serious relationships. No, so absolutely. He needs to let his find his inner queer and yeah, go wild. But he just needs to learn what he likes, what he wants. Because Ben's <laughs> just one man. Exactly. There's plenty of men in in the one uh, position for Ben. Well, we don't. <laughs> what, what position do you think he is in, though? I see Ben as being a very versatile That's lover. That's true. Yeah, mm. he is all over the place. Kathy would know. She just listen in, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but then she just makes breakfast for them the next morning. So we had like Callum leaving and I'm guessing he's on like a short break now, but I'm not mad at him. It, it seems fair. He's out of the Mitchells for Christmas, which is probably good. Mm. And um, Well, it's probably best that he's out of the way of the Mitchells altogether, especially the way things are or have gone over Christmas for mm. the Mitchells. And I think the less Callum knows, the better, which is why Ben had broken up with him because it's his way of protecting him, as he said last week. And yeah, in a weird way. Yeah. Well, not really in a weird way, because he just sees Callum as being, you know, not strong enough to survive the Mitchell Manor. <laughs> Although Callum has shown a, a, quite a violent side to that this week himself. When he I know, his arts nemesis, Leo, he mm. attacked him in the street. It really made me laugh when Jack was, was just walking by and he was like, oh, better arrest you. <laughs> yeah, 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 with his police chum. <laughs> and he was only, and he was talking about Callum at that time too. He was yeah. like, oh yeah, Callum is a good guy. Oh, oh hang on. And then he's just beating up Leo mm, in the street. Which is understandable. Um, it is understandable. Whitney feels upset that like Leo doesn't seem to be getting his comeuppance for essentially kidnapping her and trying to <laughs> force a confession out of and her. And nearly kill, like, tried to kill her as well. Well, did he really try to kill her, Well, though? he was going to. He wouldn't let her out of the hotel. Yeah, but was he going to kill her? I don't think he was going to kill her. No, he just wanted a forced confession. I mm. think torture might have been involved at some point. <laughs> yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm really impressed with how they've done the Whitney and Callum relationship, like mm. how they're like friends. Like we, we did say this months ago, we wanted her to be like his gay friend and yeah. fag hag and stuff. And that's exactly what they are. Yeah, they're, really and like they're it. protecting each other too. And it goes to show that the the speech that Callum made way back when it got found out that he had, you know, him and Ben and he was gay. You know, he said he does love Whitney. Mm. It's just that, you know, not He's in that way. Her. And yeah, and so he does. He wants to look after her still. And I think she feels the same way. So she comforted him over Ben and he reciprocated it by comforting her and defending Leo, uh, Whitney against leo mm. but whitney's just whitney's fine she's got a rape alarm now she can she showed <laughs> that pink. off I know. <laughs> which store do you reckon was selling that on the market maggie's you reckon maggie yeah. maggie's sex maggie's sex store yeah i think so mm. sex store slash flower store mm. but i mean leo's still doing his like weird stalker thing he's like he's still there he's not going no but he's been he's been threatened by more than one <laughs> member of wolford now well, he was great Gray. In as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he said he said to him he's like no matter what you say to me you're not going to get rid of me so stop trying because mm, gray's such a good guy well, you, well i know it's it's almost popcorn and kettle isn't it, it is for funny, gray to yeah. kind of defend a woman's honor in that way but then we know he beat up that guy didn't he uh in the nightclub when mm. he was upset by the way the guy was treating a woman so it's funny how he kind of can't see he thinks he's bettering himself but he isn't but can't see it outside yeah, of it's himself odd, it? it's really odd that he looks that way but basically he just wants leo to they want to find an excuse to fire leo because they don't want him working for him anymore yeah but they found an excuse because he'd been he'd been arrested and mm. and essentially charged but not not you know yeah, one month notice further. i think he gave him yeah yeah so he's not working there anymore so but i mean leo leo almost are you kind of leo's being a bit admirable with the sense that he's admitting he's wrong and his fault and now said to Whitney that you know our, our only fault or crime that 
I couldn't recognise is that we both loved Tony and we both believed everything Tony was saying and we've both been manipulated by him. Mm. Now we've both realised that we were both we're, we're wrong. I, I took a little longer than you did. Why can't we now still be together? And so it's it's weird. I think he's, you know, he still loves Whitney. But is it is it that he's still... Is he pursuing Whitney because he does love her? Or is he pursuing Whitney because he still wants to learn more about his dad? I don't know. I don't trust... I still don't trust him. I don't mm. trust that he loves her, like, really properly. Not like Callum loves her. <laughs> well, um, Callum's his, kind, though, his, isn't he? Yeah, his, like, version of love is very warped. And, like, he is stalking her almost. I'm getting mm. flashbacks of Michelle from two years ago with the stalker. The what, the tube? Yeah, the bleeding nose man. Because <laughs> um, he's sort of, like, appearing everywhere and he's not really getting the hint and he doesn't think what he's doing is creepy. He thinks it's relatively normal and kind of coming from a good place but mm. really it's not but, so but i think he's desperately trying to fix what he'd done to whitney you think he is though or is he still plotting revenge i just don't trust him I, no i think he is trying to f- i think he is trying to fix what he's done for whitney but i don't know his why he's doing it like is it because he genuinely loves her or is it because they, they've got that connection about her then being you know mm. almost like his only link to his dad maybe. exactly and so he wants to learn more through whitney about his dad because that's essentially his problem he's just never known enough to mm. you know kind of put that that because yeah, he could have never been in his life could he tony no he wasn't he went he went he to prison. Been in prison pretty much presumably when his mum was pregnant, pregnant yeah. yeah with him so but he's, he's 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 here for a long time He's here for the long game, so you know it's a, it's a year-long storyline. So we've got, <laughs> we got, we got, yeah. we we've just got to have to wait and see what's going to happen with it. But I like it. I quite like that. I like that they've done the impactful part of the story. It's been found out because we were both very doubtful that you know why are they letting us know that he's Tony's son so quickly and it's silly because Bianca knew. So we we wondered how they were going to stretch out for a year. Mm. But now we're obviously going to see what's he doing to Whitney. Is he manipulating her still, or is there some kind of connection that he yeah. wants to? build on because he's got that lawyer background he's going to kind of he's clever enough to never do anything which is going to give him a restraining order well that's or the thing isn't it yeah anything like that mm. so he knows yeah. exactly how to go right up to the line mm. but never quite crossing it and that'd be interesting as well to see the the fight where perhaps you know gray and callum and whitney are all going to try to push leo to try to cross that line mm. but he'll never be pushed far enough he's always he's almost got that power now as well over callum not only does he have that weird video of him but now if he does want to press charges callum's like police career is over mm. so that that's kind of on the line at the moment because mm. we don't know if callum's going to pursue that or not and that's the thing so he can continue to kind of just push callum away and warn him to stay away from protecting whitney mm. time will tell so we're going to talk about Chantel and Grey now, which was kind of like added on at the end of the week. I didn't expect it to turn up in Christmas week and it was there. Yeah, it was a surprise, but um, it didn't feel out of place for me. Mm. I thought it kind of added to the miserable <laughs> square. But then that's I love it. I, that's what I want from EastEnders over Christmas. I want to, I want to feel down with my Baileys in one hand <laughs> and yeah, my mince pie in the other. Yeah, it was all, obviously every time Chantel and Grey have a, thing going on it's always ends in horror and this mm. obviously was no exception the funny thing is is that for the last weeks building up to this we've been saying how it's really odd how Chantel seems to have the power and the hold over grey and we believe that grey is trying to better himself and making himself better but he something clicked in him again this week and he's gone back to the way that mm. we see saw him at the beginning and that's this very dominant powerful and quite threatening man towards mm. Chantel and like sneaky as well Mm, and yeah. apparently Karen's ordained, is she? Apparently, <laughs> you can just do it online now. Did she, do you think she did it that day when Grey texted her? Well, I'm I, I do, I'm guessing that it's not a proper vow renewal. I mean, what is a vow renewal? Well, that's really? true. Yeah, you let's don't. be honest, it's not legal thing, is it? You just got Karen to do it just for yeah, fun. You can just get someone to print out like some some notes off the internet, and anyone can do it. Because mm, obviously, it all fell through at the beginning of the week, and Chantel kind of was like, "Oh, thank God." I'll just put this off a bit. And obviously then that's when Grey was like, oh no, I've, they kind of like, Karen kept telling both of them what they were both thinking. Yeah. So she they was were like trying the to be sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> but every time they were trying to do something sneaky, she would then tell the other person. Mm. Um, so he ended up getting her to do the whole thing and surprise it on her. Cause he's going on about having a baby again as well. well. Yes. Again, this is something he's pushing for. And I think perhaps that's where his frustrations lie because he keeps asking her and she keeps saying yes, but not really meaning it. Mm-hmm. And so perhaps she's not trying as hard as maybe he wants to be trying. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in a very clean way, but you know mm. what I'm saying. Like they're, they're perhaps not trying. She'd, she'd rather often. do the dishes rather yeah. than go upstairs with him. But she'd rather go out for a meal and then have a bottle of wine, mm. while he'd rather, yeah, go and toss around in the sheets for 
10, 15 minutes. I don't know. I don't know if he's got the stamina. Oh, I think he has. He did that 10k, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's true. He ran it. Mitch drove it. What does that tell you about Mitch? Yeah, but I mean, speak of Mitch, he looked like he's kind of noticing now. Mm. Um, because he was obviously down on Grey all week anyway, and Carol's like, "Oh, you just don't like him. Just get over it." But like at, during the wedding thing, when Chantel did that weird thing where she was like, "I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't believe how brilliant you are." And yeah. I was like, "For God's <laughs> sake!" That was like something out of like a rom com. But um, Mitch was like looking at her and noticing that she was visibly mm, upset. uncomfortable and mm. upset by the whole scenario. I mean, she didn't know Chantel was quite happy that the vows had been cancelled, the venue had cancelled. Mm. Then they phoned her and said it was all okay actually, and they could have the vow renewal. And then Gray finds out that Chantel had turned them down by Karen. As you say, Karen was a right sneaky, wasn't she? She was telling everyone little bit tidbits about one another. It's like, oh, tell you, tell your secret, tell your secret. And um, yeah, it's I think Gray's obviously getting a bit wound up and frustrated by Chantel's lack of commitment, where he feels as though he's putting more effort in than what she is. He's pushing the blame on her, isn't he? What he's just pushing? He's saying, I'm trying. I'm yeah. doing. You don't. You everything I say, you take wrong. I'm doing therapy. I'm doing this, and you're not doing anything for me. Mm. Well, you, you won't have a baby. <laughs> but did you notice he also said that he was he, she, that she was hurting him? So it's, he was almost. I don't know. He was almost mm, turning the blackmail around, yeah. wasn't he? He's was like, you know, I I know I've hurt you. I'm I'm apologising for it. I feel I've you know I'm taking therapy. I'm trying to better myself. Why are you now hurting me and taking none of the blame, taking none of the burden for it? And so his way of giving her the blame is by again becoming a bit more forceful because the way he he kind of forced her upstairs, didn't mm, he? No, he, he held did, her by the yeah. wrist and was pulling her up the stairs. You mm. know, we've seen him do that before though. Mm. Um, because last time he did that, that's when she came downstairs and she had the bruises on her ribs and the nurse asked her and she said oh my partner's um gets experimental during sex and stuff yeah and it's like oh so yeah and he's booked a honeymoon as well so she's got tenerife. A, week, a week of it tenerife, tenerife. is yeah. that where he takes that's what you said tenerife oh it's a bit cheap for gray mm. cool. i mean it was a last minute booking yeah i'll just put respect to caribbean oh you something. can't just hop on a caribbean plane can you might need a visa don't you're you? a solicitor you can <laughs> <laughs> I'm the law. <laughs> Let me on. Did you notice this week also that Jack had given Grey a filthy look when he walked into the cafe? Oh yeah, I noticed that. Mm. So Jack's still being very suspicious of Grey, not quite. He's a policeman. Trusting <laughs> he is. Investigator, sorry. Yeah, well, I, d- I did wonder about that, but I guess it's because of that weird nightclub thing. I guess. I know, but you think he would have moved on because <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't you? Because he's meant to be investigating. I mean, I don't know what crimes are happening on, on Albert Square, but this week Jack would just basically did his own private yeah, investigation. Private Investigating, yeah, he might as well. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just find that odd. Maybe it's to do with the whole Leo thing, and I don't know. Yeah, but it's funny how Leo has been connected to Grey. Maybe that's another reason why Grey was being a bit, you know, you need to leave because he didn't like that Leo is being associated by him mm. and by association. Down his, um, it's making Grey look, yeah, it's making Grey look bad again. Yeah, maybe. I mean, she's got a whole week now where she can't escape. No kids, no Karen, because Karen kept walking in right at the right time as well this week. Yeah, and the relief in Chantel. Every mm. time, oh my goodness, every time there's a scene where Chantel is in a difficult situation and Karen walks in or one of her family walks in, the relief that you feel just because she's she's safe again. Safe, yeah. Oh, it's awful. Mm. I mean, I was nearly ready for someone to find out now on this storyline. Like, I'm about ready now for her to confide in someone or something to go to the next level because there's only so many times we can see her like sheepish in the house and stuff mm. so i am ready now for it to just someone like whitney or someone to find out i mean there was that friendship with whitney wasn't mm. there um again which is the bond with her and leo maybe it will come out when whitney might confide with her about leo and yeah they'll both confide about yeah their men. yeah and chantel will say oh I, n- I know what that's like being stalked or something like that mm. funny how um gray also met uh, <laughs> met um chantel by practically kind of abusing her over the beginning by splashing her with his car mm. <laughs> like, that's how um a jack, power trip that's how jack met ronnie isn't it and they splashed her with a car oh there you go she had a go at him yeah on yeah. his first ever episode so there's more similarities between jack and gray yeah he's dirty looking isn't maybe that's why the dirty look <laughs> i remember him he's a young me <laughs> yeah. um right we're gonna go on to our festive christmas game because if you didn't know it is tishmas week it is i wonder why you're wearing that red and white fluffy hat <laughs> on your head um so we're gonna do a little christmas game and then we'll be back with the big old shianu storyline <laughs> Seeing as we're doing the festive episode, I thought it would be appropriate that we made a festive game to go along with it. Ooh, exciting. That's right. Does Christmas involve... isn't dead yet. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Christmas is alive for another week. It is. So do you want to know the title of the game? 
Of course. The brand new game. It is called Slater Secret Santa. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> so, I don't know if this game will work, but we'll find out, won't we? I've got a, 10 characters okay. who Cat Slater has got Christmas presents for. Right. But she's forgotten who she bought them for. So you have to remind her. Oh, I see. So I have to match the present with the character. That's right. Gosh, Kat's being very generous this year. <laughs> yeah, well, that's before her house got taken away. I was about to say, considering she was being thrown out of her house <laughs> less, well, only a few days ago, she's now buying presents for the whole square. That's right. Very kind of her. So yeah, I'm going to give you the item, the mm. present, and you have to think, who would Kat or who would you buy that present for on EastEnders? Be, be cat. Think of a mind of cat. That's right. So are you ready to begin for the first present and try and match up to who it is? Yeah. Can I just ask, is, is there going to be characters who are have died or is it just only current characters? No, current characters are alive, obviously. Okay. I don't, you, don't say obviously. Can't buy a present for someone who's you, dead. You do this every time. You say, oh, no, it's, it's someone who's in the show. And then it's someone who's not been in the show for months or years or down the line. And you're like, <laughs> of course it's not that. Yeah. Well, I mean, for example, then, if mm. I said big hooped earrings... It would be a character who's died, Pat yes. Butcher. So that's a little example, but that's obviously not <laughs> going to be on there. But that's the type of thing. Okay, but the character is very much alive and still in the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Join so in the... a home. <laughs> yes, yeah, if you can guess as well. So the first present Cat has got is musical tickets. Who would you buy them for? Musical tickets. Um, there's only one character who I know is quite a fan of the musical. Right. Um, maybe not so... F- Flouncy about it now, but I reckon that's Ben Mitchell. That's correct. That must be who it's for. What musical is it? It's just a voucher to go to whichever <laughs> one he wants. <laughs> but you're a West End voucher. Yeah, with Lexi. You're, you're a fan of musicals, aren't you, Ben? <laughs> no. God, no. <laughs> uh, so that's good. So Ben's got his present. So that's nice. For you. Good, I'm glad. He deserves it for his mm. charitable work this year. <laughs> right, the second one is a book of knitting patterns. Knitting patterns? Hmm. Um, can't think of anyone. Oh, I, I reckon. Well, not that she needs it, but was it Kathy? Yes, that's right. Yes. Always need a new pattern. Well, she uses that machine. Doesn't it? <laughs> machine. <but> she, <laughs> does it? Does the work for her? That's true. Right. The next one is a Gretna Thunberg book. G- Gretna Thun. Uh, yeah. The, the Gretna, environmental. Gretna. 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 <laughs> Gretna. <laughs> the environmentalist. Yes, the child star. The time. Time, time of our world. No, no, no. Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Yeah, her. <laughs> she might be the time of your world, Ben. <laughs> uh, so an environmentalist. Oh, that's going to be our Bailey. Yeah, Bailey Baker. She's collecting her plastic bottles. That's Bailey correct. Baker, yeah. That's right. She's so thoughtful. Who, Cat? Cat, yeah. She really is. Right. A 24-pack of Walker's crisps. Other brands are available. <laughs> um, Walker's. What well, flavour? Is flavour specific? Just a 24-pack of mix. Oh, I mean, is, it, is it the festive mix where it has the pigs and blankets and the Brussels sprout flavour? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yum, yum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it can't be, just to narrow it down because of food, it can't be dotty because Walker's Crisps aren't vegan. Right. That's the only one. <laughs> so that's one out. Uh, Walker's Crisps. Who would like crisps? Oh, it's going to be so obvious when you say it. Oh, I don't really know. Are they skipping? Do they get their present? Do they get their present if I don't know? Because no. oh. Kat doesn't know to give it to you. I'm going to have to press you for time. Okay, There's yeah, the limits. I, I Pass. Know. Pass. Okay. Do you want me to tell you now or do you want to come back to your wrong answers later? Uh, I'm assuming there's going to be more than one. <laughs> I'm doing we'll all right. We'll come back to them at the end. Come back to right, it. Right. So we've got some hair ties or hair crunch, um, scrunchies. Um, I've seen that's getting tough. That could be anyone. <laughs> could it... someone who likes having their hair tied up? Oh, okay. I'm going to say, now you said that, someone likes a quite a high knot, quite a high... Mm. Yeah, there's a few people. Is there a name for it, isn't there? A high ponytail? Yeah. You just shrug your shoulders. A bun. That's not a bun. Hair bun. No, it's not a bun. It's it's a ponytail, but it's really high up. It's like on the centre of their Oh, right. Didn't say it was a ponytail, did I? I just said their hair ties were scrunchy. But anyway. Well, I'm going to say, say, okay, right, fine. I'm going to say that is uh, Tiffany. No, that's incorrect. Oh, dear. Right, we've got some protein powder up next. Well, then that's going to be... Ah, oh, Kush. Kush Kazimi. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Yeah. She wants to keep his um, muscles firm. Yeah, well, he needs to <laughs> trim off those uh, turkey extras. He oh, needs yeah, to keep fit for his potatoes. cat. You think she'd be a bit more thoughtful than that, though, our cat? She know. gave him away, Carmel did. Away? She gave the cat away, didn't she, when she went to Dubai? No, cat. Oh. <laughs> his girlfriend. I thought you meant his mum's cat. No. <laughs> no, has cat bought a present of a cat? The cat? No. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying cat would bought bought something more oh, thoughtful, right, yes, not the not, not the cat. <laughs> oh god! Right, um, loaf of bread vouchers. <laughs> what? 
She's got some vouchers so someone can buy lots and loads of bread. <laughs> oh, God, you're really scraping the barrel of ideas now, aren't no, you? No, not when you know who it's for. Loaf of bread. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Janet? <laughs> no, nope, that's wrong. We'll come back to that. Okay. Lots of people not getting presents. Right. She has bought someone a biro pen. Oh, <laughs> Where most people would use it to write, there's always a character that can use it for medical reasons. That's true. And that is Sonia Fowler. That's right. She's getting her present. Right, we have... She got her present on Boxing Day from Martin. I know. Wink. Very lucky. <laughs> Everyone's getting a bit of Martin, aren't they? He's right. sharing the love, <laughs> literally. <laughs> this photo is a framed photo of Louise. Oh, a framed photo of Louise. Mm. Um... It seems obvious it was Keanu, but I don't think it is Keanu. No. Of Louise. Oh, uh, Lisa. 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 No, nope, that's wrong. Right, the last one, and then I'll go through your many wrong answers. Four? Only four? Yeah, at the moment. Right, so who <laughs> has Katz bought a drone for? Uh, Dennis. Yes, that's correct. Denny. It's a new Why? drone. Does he need a new drone? Well, the other one's gone missing since last summer, so... It's last maybe... seen during the football storyline, if we remember that, with Mick. Was it this football storyline? I thought it was when... Yeah, because he was flying it across and filming football, wasn't he? I don't know. Uh... Right, so do you want to go back and see who you got incorrect and who's not getting presents? Okay, well, can I get guess then? So, crisps. Yeah, yeah 24 pack of crisps. Crisps. 24 pack of crisps. You've already tried to guess, so you can't guess again, because the time's running No, out. I didn't. Not the crisps. Oh, for God's sake. Crisps, I think, was... <laughs> We obviously don't know. I do know. No, you've lost the point. No, I want to. No, it's over. Too late. It was for Jags. I was going to say Jags. Well, tough. (laughs) That's quite obvious, really. Well, that could have been anything. That could have been the bread as well. (laughs) No, the bread will be explained. Okay. Um, Hair ties was for Karen Taylor. Oh, that was a She likes to have her hair tied up all the time. Yeah, well, I don't accept that one. It's a good present. Right. The vouchers for loaves of bread was for Keegan, because he's got a bread... Sandwich business. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> Fair enough. And a framed photo of Louise was bought for Louise because she loves of herself. Of course, she loves herself. That was a trick. <laughs> mm, very sneaky. Cat was being a bit bitchy on that one, I feel. <laughs> really? <laughs> Six out of ten. Yeah, mm, okay, but a lot of people are going empty this Christmas. Well, I'm sure Jags can go without his crisps for a little while. <laughs> and Louise doesn't, Louise's got bigger problems on her mind than a photo she's got those photos of herself but anyway. she's got a mirror in her room that's all she needs to do is <laughs> stand in front of that and stare at herself she'll be fine with that well there you go that was your one and only edition of slater secret santa so i hope you enjoyed it because that's the only one there is until next year oh yeah we'll do one next year <laughs> why not <laughs> the contradiction in turn right so we're on to the main meal now <laughs> the 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 full roast. Yeah, the roast potatoes and turkey. All the trimmings. Because <laughs> um, it all finally came out after a year and a half. This storyline's been going now. Yeah, real real big story, mm. isn't it? I mean, the reveal, it was kind of a weird way to reveal it when Phil worked it out in the end. I mean... He... <laughs> <laughs> Phil accused everyone. Anyone and everyone. Mm-hmm. Who... <laughs> Even Max, who they know Sharon hates. Yeah, Max, um, Jack, Kish. Ian... <laughs> Ian was even in the uh, firing line yeah. at one point. Although Ben was like, come on, Dad. Don't. <laughs> yeah. No. But it was like, every time Phil came up with a, an idea, Ben was like, no, it's not. And then one time Ben then left the party and wasn't there. And it was Keanu. Mm. Because, well, I'm not spoiling anything by saying it's Keanu. It was Keanu. And Ben wasn't there to kind of temper his... Temper no. his uh, he did like his side tackle anger. when Phil finally worked it out. And he was about to that was amazing. Oh, him. I loved that. As soon as he said, yeah. as soon Because he basically, it was all down to two things. One, that it got released that he did personal training session with Sharon. Yeah, because Louise worked it out first when Phil and Ben asked her in the cafe. Mm. But she said to them, no, I don't remember anything from last summer. But mm. she did. She Because she was blackmailing them both, wasn't she, at the time? Well, she wanted it, yeah. And she wanted to mine the information herself before mm. she wanted to confirm it with Phil. Um, so... In a way, it was quite admirable of Louise. She didn't just go... Normally, Louise's way of doing things is just been like, no, yeah, and yeah. just kind of just bulldoze into an idea. Yeah, Louise was good this week. Really good, actually. I really loved Tilly Keeper, and she played... This is Louise we wanted, a, a Mitchell, not a spoiled brat. We wanted a calculated, yeah, cold Ronnie. Mitchell. Yeah, Ronnie or a Roxy. Mm. Can, can fight for herself. Not and, Sam. Yeah, and isn't dependent on, you know, her dad. But she's able to work it out for herself, take it calm, cool, and then with her brother, was able to fight. <laughs> and murder. And murder, yeah. <laughs> I found it interesting that, obviously, she brought up the personal training sessions, which I thought was really good. Yes. Because that was such a funny thing from last last year. When Sharon made her listen to that, <laughs> oh, 
Oh, shit, Keanu, you're working hard. Oh, down yeah. there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm dripping. <laughs> um, so that was really good. But I thought it was weird that the the weird storyline about them going to a hotel and there was Santas who were too hot to be dressed as Santas. Like, both of them said that, Keanu and Sharon. Yeah, it was a summer stag do. So mm. they must have gone to a hotel and had but a... off screen, a which is weird. This is the mad thing, because it was referencing something that never happened. And mm. we, that's what we did as well. We looked back in the catalogue, we had a look, and we couldn't find it anywhere. No, it didn't happen. No. Nope. And it's like, there's so much happened. Like, they could have maybe said something about the pink handcuff incident or something. Yeah. Or like... But then there were no witnesses to that, I guess. So it's not something you would yeah, open. Phil could have found the handcuffs, and Sharon could have been like, ooh... I haven't seen them in years. And then Keanu might see them and be like, oh, I used them once on a girl or something like that. I don't mm. know. Something that we could have related to because this thing in the hotel. I mean, it, it was fine. It was a good reveal. Mm. It was a way of It's just a shame it was an off screen thing. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a shame it was something we couldn't relate to as well. Because if it had been, then. But then this is it, isn't it? It's retrospective. It's unfortunate you can't. It's a shame that they couldn't. They didn't at the time know that this was the way it was going to be revealed. Because mm. presumably it was never a thought in the writer's mind a year no, ago. Different this... producer. Yeah, exactly. This would be. A, this is how the story would end. So it is a shame in that respect, but it tied it together. It worked, and mm. and it was a big enough <gasps> moment. And as you said, then. When Phil, I, I loved that. When Phil got up and his eye could, twitched, yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, and you could see him storming, and you just saw Ben rugby tackle him <laughs> out the door, and he goes like, "Right, we know this is true now. Let's just calmly work out what we're going to do next, mm, and do it without getting our hands dirty." Mm. And obviously, that was Christmas Eve, and then Christmas Day, Phil's like grand plan of he told Kathy, "Oh, dinner's cancelled, so can everyone come to the Bills?" Obviously, he didn't tell Sharon that, so the how the Mitchell house was just him and Sharon. And she was like being Miss Housewife, like she has been all week, <laughs> like doing everything perfect Christmas dinner, setting the table. And then um, yeah, he just outright said it. And there was a really good scene. It was about mm. like eight minutes long, the scene of just Sharon and Phil like and having it out. One take, you said as well. Yeah, they did. They did it in one go. Steve McFadden is a one take wonder, isn't he? And Tish. <laughs> good performance by Tish. I mean, you're right. But it's just that Steve McFadden's one scenes with... Ben as well, mm. one take scenes. He's cheap. really knocking them out cheap. <laughs> Saves on the footage. Saving him money. He just wants to get out early because he's got pantomime <laughs> rehearsals. Um, it was a really nice scene. And Sharon didn't like collapse in a heap. She mm-hmm. stood there and was like, okay, you know, I'm going to tell you exactly why I did it. Yeah. And she, she, she said she felt loved and sexy. Not like a carer from some old man. I know. So she didn't mm. really she didn't really soften it either to him. She just mm. said it outright. You she know. did say only once. Which, of course, isn't true. No, that is a lie. They were like raisins in the summer. <laughs> she was going at it so often. It was just endless, wasn't it? <laughs> but, um, but, you know, she didn't need to give him all the details. But it was good. And she threw back, like, you were horrible to me. You just went missing. You, mm. I had the, your illness to deal with, caring for you. She didn't bring up the Denise baby thing which is a shame um i thought that was a bit because she could have easily thrown that in his face yeah and shut him up. yeah but then again he 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 did it when he was not a right no, that makes it okay but he did it when he was not a right mind or sharon she could have been drunk although to be fair she probably had, had a few <laughs> drinks <laughs> she had, had a few drinks perhaps but, but you know not not to the extent that phil was phil was paralytic when he drank with, and so was denise when they slept together so neither of them really knew mm. what they were kind of it's amazing to me that he got it up at all to be honest with you <laughs> that he was able to achieve the goal That's true, yeah. but um you know when sharon did it she she was knowingly she she getting was involved with it yeah so she although phil has been guilty of it, it it wasn't and 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 it was just once with phil it wasn't a calculated you know an affair mm. It was a one-off, That's while true. with Sharon it was a full-blown affair with Keanu. <laughs> one we loved, one we enjoyed immensely. Yeah, keep going. And, but one we may never see mm. again. I mean, at the same time this was going on, we had Louise confront Keanu about it. And um, like she found out that Lisa knew the whole time. Mm. She kind of was angry at her and just asked her to get out of the house. But and... Lisa lied as well. It's, it's funny how everyone kind of just changes the truth slightly whenever... Make them a bit better. Well, make them look a bit better, but also at the fear that Phil might... Might just kind of rein himself in a little bit if they didn't <laughs> give him the mm. full truth. <laughs> so, you know, Lisa said, um, oh, yeah, I knew that the baby wasn't yours, but I didn't know who who the baby's is. Mm. Mel's taken that to the grave. And it's like, no, you do know. You Lisa know didn't Keanu. know. Lisa did know it was Keanu's. Yeah, not at the time, not when Mel, Mel never told her that. Yeah, but she knew when she was confronted this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Phil is, again, Phil doesn't need to. Phil, Phil doesn't, it feels angry enough. The it? person who's in the safest place is Mel, let's be honest. She is. <laughs> Over all of yeah, this. Yeah. But, I mean, Louise played quite a game because she sort of said to him, you know, Keanu, you're the father of my baby. Um, my 
dad is going to go mental and kill you. We both need to go. Mm. And um, yeah, they were both deciding to pack off together. Off to Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> the villa. Yeah, that villa that Mel bought. Mm. But then you got the, the like twist of the episode, I suppose, when Louise suddenly turned to him and was like, no, don't cross the Mitchell. Oh, that was, oh my God. That was just, oh, just chills, I tell you, mm. chills. Again, this was just a great Louise moment, um, which... You just don't. I think actually cleverly because Louise has been portrayed as such a shallow character all these years. Mm, this week came when, out of the blue. But yeah, this week when she became a for for lack of a better term a Mitchell, it was just it just the impact of it was just mm. hit you hard. Yeah, because even though you weren't expecting it, it still didn't feel like like a character assassination. It felt like Louise probably could do that. Oh what yeah. She did. Oh god, she could hundred percent do that. Mm. I, that did not. It didn't. It didn't surprise me, but it it hit me and and yeah, perfect. Loved it. Loved so we it. We don't know if she's doing like a double double bluff here. But see, this is we've it. got loads of unanswered questions Wink about gate. the second half. <laughs> <laughs> the second half of Christmas Day, which is going to be revealed next week in a mm. flashback episode, yeah, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Mm. I'm sure of it. It will. Mm. Um, but there's loads of little things like Lisa disappeared for. The rest of the day when she went out the room like where did when, lisa go yeah when her and when keanu and louise were trying to run away why wasn't Louis, lisa there trying mm. to you know help them or you know hinder them that's strange mm. linda disappeared and obviously linda's been acting weird mm. so there's loads of things like we don't know exactly what martin's done because ben has said to martin i'll get rid of your van that is part of a sit and run if you kill this <laughs> kill this person who happens to be Keanu yeah. and there's like a recording of the there's murder. a video of it and again you we didn't see what Ben saw in that video so you know but but it seemed quite clear cut that that's the only thing it, well, <laughs> the video yeah they obviously they cut away when Martin I guess where did he shoot him in the chest or the head I don't know but they cut away but Ben was watching it and thought and when like oh you killed him yeah, like, yeah. so he must have seen it on the video but then how was it how was it did he shoot over his shoulder and like just move the camera enough so it looked like he'd been shot? It's very risky, isn't it? It's a it's a risky game to play. Did I do they like... do Photoshop, <laughs> like put some <laughs> special effects. Did he use iMovie? <laughs> Any of the above? I mean, it. I did love the perspective that I, obviously Martin, as we know now, loves his video games. As in 1991, he got his first Nintendo Game Boy, even though oh, Uncle, yeah. Uncle, Uncle Pete, Pete took his Tetris game. And Arthur. Forty three. <laughs> Beep, 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 42 and poor, uh, Martin. poor Martin but 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 he obviously played a lot of doom in the mid 90s as well because that that point of view he had well you know why he did that because he's been caught on camera stealing the cards a few months ago he's thought no i'm not getting i'm not showing myself on camera this time so he just showed the just barrel with a gun. gun but he was using it wasn't he against ben he said no i'm keeping this video in this mobile phone and mm. if you should shop me to the police then i'm going to use this as evidence but i don't quite know how that's evidence well, that's against him we don't quite know what ben said to Louise the plans changed which mm. we thought meant that Martin said yes but then Ben and Louise don't want to tell Phil that it's Martin doing it no so there's something here that's not obviously we're going to be shown in the flashback but there's something there which either Louise or Ben is doubling up on some sort of lie and also there's something also linda involvement i mean we'll talk about mm. linda's story main story later but we should bring up and she that... went missing she was last seen outside where the van was where the van was yeah and and she had blood on her shoe when she was found on boxing mm. day so and every time anyone mentions keanu she like nearly breaks down mm, mm, so yeah there's tell. obviously loads going on but we don't we don't have the answers i'm afraid we, we don't really speculate but there must be either louise's double double crossing and making phil believe keanu is dead so she can escape with keanu and know that phil won't be looking for them or ben has maybe doesn't want to kill Keanu I no don't because I think no I think Ben I think Ben is I think Ben thinks he's he has been killed because mm, he because saw the, the mobile phone footage mm. so there's so he's seen he's seen what he believes is the the last moment of Keanu laying on the ground dead mm. but Louise hasn't seen that nor has she been privy to it and she's not been involved in that part but she made it very clear when she was being questioned by Jack this week that um to her dad that you know you don't I'm not a weak link here so again is that her way of saying like you know I've kind of outwitted my own, my own dad yeah, yeah. That's so what I'm, I'm thinking I'm the, we need to talk about the uh, elephant in the room What's that? Well, we've had lots of people message us saying that Louise winked. Oh, yes. Louise winked at Karen. Giving the ring back. Yeah. And was it a deliberate wink? Mm. So is Karen in on it? Is she a winker? 
it would because they... Karen well, Karen went missing from the Vic when Sharon came in. Yeah. Karen went, oh god, I better go find Keanu, and she was never seen again for the rest of the episode. Right. So is Louise? Is like Karen acting like she's worried about Louise, and she actually knows? But then Karen's running around the square on Boxing Day, asking everyone, or getting. She even gets Billy to find out. Yeah, but if she, she could can. be. Part of the plan. I don't know. It could be. I, I, you don't know, do you? All these people went missing. You don't know where they've been. That's it. It's everyone's gone one way. That's why she would wink at Karen to say, you know, here's the ring. Wink, well, the wink. wedding ring is a si- is a signal as if to say he's safe. He's fine. Yeah. This is the plan. Don't yeah. Know. So it's still going on. I mean, watch it back. If any any listeners, you obviously it's going to be on iPlayer now for what thirty days. I don't know how long it's on iPlayer. They but do it for watch... a year now, don't they? Do they? Wow, lucky us. So um, <laughs> watch back the episode when Louise gives the ring back to Karen and tell us if you think that mm. that was a knowing wink or not. Her hair's a bit fuzzy, so there might just be a bit of hair in her eye. Maybe it's it, it's just it, it's it, not like an obvious wink. It's a very very, very subtle. subtle wink. It's an insanely subtle mm. wink. Not um, like Hunter when he used to. Oh wink. God, his wink. Oh, he's a prat. <laughs> but um, but Ben also winks at Louise when. He said, oh, I'll see you out, Jack. After she said, don't underestimate, I am, a, I'm not a weak, weak link. Mm. Ben winked at Louise behind Phil's back. But then maybe Ben was winking at Louise. <laughs> <Don't>, the word <laughs> wink. Maybe Ben winked at Louise just to kind of like comfort her and say, you know, it's, it's okay. All right. It's yeah, all going to be okay. And you're doing a good, you're doing a good job. We'll but, know next week. Well, we will, all this will be answered next week. On, is it New Year's Day? The, New Year's Day, yeah. The retrospective the episode. Flashback. The flashback. It is. And obviously we have Sharon Tishmas. We need to talk a bit more about Sharon. Yeah, she got chucked on the floor by Phil. I know he really was quite heavy with her, mm. wasn't he? I mean, he's... I loved how they cut away. Tish was like, "No, I don't do fooling." <laughs> yeah. You cut away, and I'll place myself. I suppose she didn't get a stunt double for her. <laughs> I'd be Sharon's stunt double. I'd suit a nice long blonde wig <laughs> and some black clothes. I'd but be I mean, good. It, it doesn't show Phil in a great light, like pushing over this pregnant woman. Well, not, a bit and not much. just that, he's also turned Sharon's son against her. Again, quite nastily, spitefully done mm, that. Stupid Dennis. I mean, Dennis, he's, he's got he's no either. spine, has he? He can't think for himself. He mm. literally has to get everyone else to think for him. He's such a prat, Dennis. Mm. He really isn't. He's he's not a... Uh, Rickman. No, he is not a Rickman. Mm. Nor is he a Watts. No. And he's definitely not a Mitchell. I loved his line when he said, I'm a Mitchell now. And it's like, no, you're not. No, you're a Billy Mitchell, if, yeah, if anything. Proper are the runt of the Mitchell <laughs> family. And to be honest with you, I think he will always be seen that way too. He's just so... No. No, Dennis. Mm, no. such a shame, isn't he? Because mm. he's got such a cool legacy with Den and Dennis, his, his granddad and his dad. Mm. It's like, but he's such a meh. And all, all he cared about was Phil bought him a new bike for Christmas. Yeah. So Phil's his best mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Sharon had her berry on, which I was, you know, she did, even she... at her time of need. But she was supporting the um, EU. She's not a Brexiteer. <laughs> she's, she's a Remainer. But she normally, she's worn that berry at the last two funerals, I think. Which is, well, she was... wore it at Dr. Legg's funeral and um, Mel's. Oh, so she's doing it in mourning that she's lost her son, her <laughs> husband, and well, any like... kind of financial life. <laughs> it's a bit much as well that Phil emptied her of a secret bank account. Mm. Like, that's not your money, Phil. It's not that secret bank account, is it? <laughs> well, they did log in, but it's a bit like, come on. Mm. It's and, a bit out of order, mm, isn't it? But she's back in the Vic where she belongs. She's one step closer. <laughs> she is, yeah, back, not back, owning Back it. in her old bedroom. Can you imagine if she backstabbed Linda and Mick, that the whole ruse was the plan. Basically, the whole plan <laughs> was that uh, Phil and Sharon were going to get the, the Vic back. <laughs> and the, 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 it all started with Shiano. Mm. And it was a really good moment on Friday, on the last episode where um, her and Shirley were having like a fight. Like, oh, in the background. <laughs> it, so I really did on Friday's episode with Lee and Tina, and they're all sitting on the bed together. But there was a part of me that, especially when they said this has been lasting for an hour now, mm. there was a part of me that just wanted to see that shootout between Shirley and Sharon. Oh, no. Hopefully it's in the flashback. Well, I'm hoping, Two-hander. It's, I'm hoping it's an iPlayer exclusive and that they literally filmed okay. the thing. Or you saw the, or the, when they were in the recording studio doing the shout of one another. Mm. I'd love to know, like, it's hard to know exactly what they were saying, but like mm. there was, they were throwing dirt at each other. Other. oh it's brilliant so yeah it would be interesting to see what they were saying for an hour mm. but we'll never know i mean it's, it's it is where shirley shines when she's just throwing shade at um sharon mm. i mean they they like just the Pat and peggy aren't they oh yeah Ish. they hate each other they just hate each other do you so you're saying they're like peggy peggy and pat 
So do you see them in like 10, 15 years time having an ice Being cream mates. van? Yeah. yeah, getting drunk in an ice cream van and sharing a moment together. It could be from now on. This could be it. They had it out for an hour. Mm. And now they're going to see each other as allies. It's funny that um, Shirley doesn't seem to be making any kind of true beeline for Phil either. You think that when... And she doesn't really seem to have an opinion on it, does she? Well, she works for Phil. Mm. And she she seems to know the gossip and the news in the fa- within the family. Because a lot of people kept saying this week, I was like, oh, Shirley told me this and Shirley told me that when they were talking about the Mitchells. You think that Shirley would have made would have made more of a move toward Phil? I thought that, you know, I... I You've always mm. thought that they they were Might more get, natural yeah. together. She's giving him time to breathe, isn't she? Oh, I Respectful see. She doesn't want to be a rebound. Sharon's no rebound. No, especially to her. No. Right, so we're going to go on and talk about Martin's part of the um, storyline now as well. So we had a little bit of history repeating itself this week. 17 years to the day nearly mm. of Jamie Mitchell's death. Mm. Caused by Martin hitting him in a car. Mm. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it wasn't Martin in the car this time. It was Tubbs. No, Martin was... was in the car, yeah, but he wasn't in driving. control of the car. Mm. Yeah, it was naughty Tubbs. He's not insured to drive that car. But also, it was the exact same situation as well. They were messing around on the radio, singing mm. their songs. Fools. Fools. When, when will they learn? And I love how Tubbs like described this job as like the most dangerous, difficult job ever. But they seem to just park up, walk in, pick up some boxes, <laughs> and walk out yeah. again. It was a heist, wasn't it? Well, apparently. It was a bit lame so could have done that on your own tubs Come i do on. love also how martin just went from being like mr the most evilest man in Albert square to this one incident that brought the flashbacks of jamie all over again and he was all again and then he started begging ben for help and saying i'm a family man i'm a good person <laughs> it's like wow that was a turn martin mm. but he's still got the darkness in him i think he's still got he still pulses through his veins it won't leave him now no. this, this new martin and um obviously sonia who's been like the oracle of eastenders history the past few weeks she was was like bringing up even more dirt and things from the past like she was mm. mentioning arthur and how what he'd think of martin and he was sitting in his shed bringing up pauline showing him photos of them from 1985 Have, the original cast photos yeah but having print photos printed and given his gifts to martin of his mum and dad holding him as a baby <laughs> I mean, Sonia would do a very good job as an EastEnders researcher. Mm. Some, you know, looking at the past and digging it up ready for she the script writers. She knows everything, writers. doesn't she? She's very good. She's very good. She just <laughs> It's because all she does all day is, or she used to, sit in and talk to Doc. And Doc must have regaled her with oh, yeah, numerous been, stories about and the Dr. past. And Dr. Leg. She talked yeah. to him on the podcast, didn't she? Yes, she did about his history and his past, yeah. <laughs> That's all. Sonia's a friend of the elderly. And when you're a friend of the elderly, you are going to hear some stories. You learn the history of Wolford. <laughs> Over many, many cups mm-hmm. of tea. Bless her. We're continuing the Martin and Sonia train because mm. Martin ended up going upstairs with her. A bit of nookie. Mm. Started on the sofa, dot sofa. Not the... Dot's house has so much action in it, doesn't it? But not, not with Dot. <laughs> no, that we know of. <laughs> well, that's true. She might be a dark horse herself. Yeah. Although she's back in 86, um, Charlie wouldn't even sleep with her that one time, would he? Oh, no. In our house. I don't think she's ever done anything in that house. Well, isn't there Doesn't isn't there a kind of indication that she kind of has only... Did it once with him, yeah. We had done it once with it. <laughs> no, but no. she must have done it more than once, though, because it's Nick, and then she had the child that they oh, bought Oh, yeah, that's true. Sonia yeah. knew that. <laughs> Dot told her. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they were... You know, it wasn't just like a, a thing that Martin was doing. He The next day he said he wasn't upset about it, that he did no. it. And yeah, so yeah. Sonia and Martin, are, they're on, but they're going to take it slow. Yeah, but he also snuck out of her room in the morning. In a vest. In a, in a vest. I haven't seen that vest in a while, <laughs> since he was at the allotment, a few probably, summers back. Probably best he keeps it on. <laughs> and uh, he snuck downstairs with a blanket and kind of tucked himself in so Bex wouldn't know the mm. what him Did you see how small that sofa was as well, compared to him? <laughs> like it barely fitted... Like his leg on it. Well, you forget how tall Martin is. I know. He's quite a tall lad. <laughs> um, so yeah, to little be... two seater. Not good for his back. No, not at all. His knees, like, and legs dangling over one end. His mm. neck crooked and then the other. Obviously, end. Sonia, being the founder of the NHS, she mm-hmm. was thinking about Martin's back. So she thought, I have a bed upstairs, Martin. Oh yeah. She was doing it for the health of him. Keep your spine, keep your spine naturally <laughs> curved, Martin. That's what Sonia would say. I'll be on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she was just thinking of him. That's all, that's Sonia. Sonia's that's what she does. Just always giving. <laughs> but obviously, the um, flashbacks about Jamie was like haunting him in his sleep and things. Mm. And like Sonia had done some research into the man and shown him <laughs> through the glass to Martin. Like here he is. Yeah. He is alive. But he's alive but on but, intensive yeah. care machine. <laughs> so in a funny way, Martin's not really won that one just yet. No, not looking good. Yeah. Well. 
I mean, supposedly Sonia wouldn't invite him to look at the man if he wasn't going to survive it. But mm. at the same time, it was kind of like Sonia could have just said, he's OK. You don't need to see him. But now she was there. She, it's almost like a uh, public information video of what not to do when you've <laughs> knocked someone down in a van. Mm. Well, I found it interesting that Sonia's like not telling the police. Like she's like, oh, keeping this secret for him, which is interesting for Sonia. I think because it will it would tear martin it might mm. make him even worse and it would destroy him um i think she's she's just only now seeing him building himself back up to the martin mm. that she loves kind of i mean she says some really she says something really sweet actually when she gives him the, the gift that we alluded to earlier yeah, I when know what she, you're gonna say yeah i honestly i thought it was such a there's been so many sweet moments i have to say this 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 week this christmas week of eastenders mm. um and one of them was when Sonia, Martin said, why are you being so kind to me? Why are you being so nice? And she just turned to him and said, you're my Martin. <laughs> Even though like, she's not. Well, no, but... James she... Bai's not her Martin. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, ja- it's James Alex something. I don't Andrew. know what his name is. James Alexandre Alexandre Andrew. Okay. Alejandro. <laughs> like that. The other Martin. The other Martin. But, but, um, but, but, but yeah, it was very Martin, sweet. It was, wasn't it? And I'm sure, I'm sure that is a throwback of something Pauline would have said to martin at some point mm. again unless i went back through every single trawl for all the episodes and looked for it which but, we are doing which we are but but we'll look out for but, it. but not specifically for this one <laughs> quote and i think that so, it's just such a such a wonderful line for me it just instantly hit me that sonia seems so na- never gotten over sonia him. yeah and sonia and martin i think will always end up together mm. they're, they're always like pat and frank the, exactly like there's that's exactly it i think that as, as they always go their own different directions, but I think ultimately, in the end, if they're still on the soap in thirty years' time, they will be married, and they'll be, as you say, they're the Pat and Frank of, mm. or like the Phil and Sharon kind of, like oh no, Phil, Phil and Sharon, and Phil and always, Sharon do not need to be together. Yeah, they always circulate through each other, don't they? But they she shouldn't be. They're not right for each other because they are just they they, they destroy toxic. each other. They are toxic yeah. for one another. Sonia's a nice girl. Sonia's, Sonia supports Martin, and I think Martin Martin always wants to be the one... This is the thing, isn't it? Martin always wants to be the breadwinner, the, the man of the house, and the one who supports the woman. Mm, like Arthur. It, like Arthur. Bit. And he did it with Stacey, but Stacey kind of... <laughs> Stacey kind of... Slated threw it. him. Yeah, it slated, pun intended, <laughs> him. And I think Sonia would be recipti- receptive of it, but at the same time, Sonia is... You know, she can fight for herself as well. She's mm, been through she's enough. She's got Carol. She has, she's got the Carol in her. Mm. But so for me, I thought I like the Sonia and Martin and I want them to be together. And to be honest with you, Martin's already lied. He's already, he's already laid the seeds of no, yeah, their relationship. Matter, so you might as well just carry on and do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I won't say this lightly, but you know, just forget about Jean on this instance. I think Jean's wrong about this. Mm. I think she's been too protective of her daughter. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Stacey's found a new man at the school gates. Let them carry on and do their <laughs> thing. And let Martin and Sonia have their thing. Mm. I mean, you just said there's been loads of sweet moments this week. I just remembered we didn't talk about quite a sweet moment, which was when Sharon went to Ian's house for like when she was thrown out. Oh, and yeah. They had that little moment on the sofa and he said he wouldn't judge her. And she told him everything. And he was like, it's fine. I thought that was a really nice moment because mm. we forget those two are friends. You forget them, and they've been so through so much together. Mm. And she was there for him when um, the whole Lucy thing came out. So. Mm. And yeah. he kissed her, and Kathy decided to bring up uh, again, making Phil immediately think it was Ian who slept with Sharon. It's like, <laughs> oh, they they went out once together. <laughs> that, that was is. that was that's a reference. That's a reference. It, it, that was when she was doing her um, magazine quizzes. <laughs> Who's your ideal man? Oh yeah, eighty-five. Yeah, she nearly had Calvin as well, didn't she? She did. Maybe Calvin's the dad. Who knows? He's busy doing Nickelodeon <laughs> in America. Um, the other part of this, obviously, Bex has made some life decisions. Mm. She's going back to uni next year and going to get a job. She is. <laughs> so we've got out of Bex, the blue. We've got Bex for another year, I guess, and then maybe well, she'll be leave. nine months, isn't it? Because she'll yeah. be back at university. Well, starting university in September. Mm. Unless she takes another gap year. There's no word on Dottie being at university. Isn't she meant to be a university student? I haven't seen that yet. Because uh, there was a hint that she's maybe a mechanic. Well, that's what I was going to say. Isn't she? She might be doing an apprenticeship of some sort. Maybe. But, but then if you're doing an apprenticeship, you should be with a, associated with a garage. Mm. Yeah, somewhere. But yeah, she, she, but again, this week she showed that she has that mechanical mind. Mm, which was really she, random. She was fixing she was the car. She was going to fix Bex's car. Yeah, yeah. And um, she had like... Dot had a Christmas dress on, which she wears every Christmas. Yes. Um, but Dot had a little storyline at Christmas where money nearly got taken out of her account. £5,000. But it didn't get taken out? Or no, was it, it attempted? It, it, no, Sonia was like, it's only been attempted, Dottie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Sonia was there. So yes, the mystery of who'd been taking the money yeah, out of Dottie, Dot's account. Um, obviously blamed Martin for it because he wasn't there. 
So maybe is that going to be part of the flashback episode? We're going to see who's tried to take five thousand pounds out. But, well, I did find it interesting that Sonny had also brought up this week that um, Martin's dad had stolen the Christmas money. So oh, yeah. do you think that was a little kind of clue of like it was Martin who took the five thousand oh, pounds? He wouldn't steal from Dot, would he? He might do if he was helping Keanu run away. Hmm. Ah, that, that, <laughs> that made though, you think. Didn't it? That was before that, wasn't it? I think well, no, it was around about On the, the same time. time. Christmas Day is when they spotted the fraudulent activity. No, so... it was Christmas morning. I, oh, I don't know. I can't remember. So much of a blur. <laughs> it's um, all happening at once. But yeah, if it's not Martin, maybe people may think it's Dotty because Sonia said to her, "You, you are your father's." daughter mm. i think it'd be too obvious it was dotty stuart and rainy were outraged too so, mm, so can't be that i do love that stuart genuinely loves that because dot was the one who's kind of put him on the took straight path and mm. took him in and trusted him and even though again she he tried to manipulate her she saw the good in him and it was her justification of basically ta- always taking her son nick in every again and again and again this time it worked out for her because mm. stuart has ended up being a good apple i want can i quickly ask you about beck's relationship with martin because beck's Obviously, mental mar- her, her mind state is being brought up again this week. And uh, Sonia says, you know, we should be looking after Bex and not looking after, you know, not thinking about ourselves. Mm. Do you think Martin's doing a particularly a very good job at looking after Bex? Because all he seems to do is these grand gestures like we'll take you to the cinema. Yeah, this week, or... buys her things. Yeah, or... That's right. Mm. He never really shows much time. Like, it's always, I'll buy you this. And then he disappears. Yeah. Comes back, I'll buy you this. Like, even the present she bought him, he opened it. Like, in the middle of the night on his own with Sonia. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So all she wants is just her dad there, but he's just not listening, is he? No. Hopefully... Just like his daddy, Arthur. He is more like Arthur, the more we get to know him recently. Yeah, see. But yeah, poor Bex. But again, they're not really showing us Bex. They're just showing... They're telling us about Bex rather than letting her actually have yeah. scenes. I wish they'd find. show... I, I agree with you. I, as I said last week, I wish they'd show her journey into her recovery to her suicide attempt early in the year. And kudos again, as I say, to Dr. Leg for seeing... <laughs> His dad in him when he visited the pub. Mm. Maybe it's someone on Dr. Legg's estate trying to take the money out of Dot's account. Maybe. Maybe it's Dr. Legg. Maybe he's <laughs> faked his death as well. So many fake deaths no, going on around the, the square. I saw that on screen. It was mm. Dot. Dot's hand was mm. in that. Lovely. Right, so we're going to go on to... A very special oh. speech. Yes. It's odd. Well, it's not odd. <laughs> so, um, in the UK, or if you live in the Commonwealth of the... Uh, <laughs> United Kingdom, you get the Queen's speech every Christmas. You mm. lucky, you lucky toads out there. So um, we had the Queen's speech with Sharon and the Vic. We did. Everyone. We did. We did. But we also had a special speech, the Christmas speech, the end of year speech from the one, the only, Halfway's Hat. Rest in peace. sadly died but from my fold away chair upon in heaven and occasionally visits to my friends in Walford I have been able to get that warm fuzzy feeling that once I could only achieve from the gentle hibernation of my master halfway's head the square has had its fair share of losses this year, namely Bailey's mum, whose name seems unpronounceable by my podcast guardians. She left on her own term, unlike young Hunter, who, after holding a special party for everyone at the Vic, forgot the most important rule in the how to throw a party handbook and got shot in the gardens. Despite Sharon's best efforts to detract Mel's attention from seeing her son die, Sharon wasn't quite so successful in preventing my queen's dirty laundry from being exposed and killing any chance of Shianu living happily ever after. Talking about fairy tales, Godmother Kathy had the first celebration of Wolford Pride and it was a great night. My dad cried listening to M people. Tina actually pulled off something she was supposed to do for her job at the Albert. And Bernie had a storyline away from Mr Murray, who also got into the spirit before suddenly having somewhere to be and leaving for good. Never to be mentioned again, apart from that rather odd butt dial voicemail. 
My Auntie Rainy needed help, but luckily my Uncle Stu was her saviour and has looked after her, making them my favourites ever since. Sadly, my daddy hasn't had too much luck with love this year. He was almost married to Whitney, but came out instead. I was really proud of my dad for being his true self, and cried in pain, remembering Chris with him. I liked Chris very much. When I watched Stepdad Ben tell Daddy Callum that he didn't love him, I was very upset and wanted very badly to be home for him. I hope that Ben finally takes better care of himself and to be with my Daddy again. <sighs> Finally, I wanted to convey my concerns that people aren't taking care of one another this year. Oracle Jean seems to have a keen eye on the welfare of Chantelle and spotted how unhappy she was. But I only wish Jean would finally see the truth and find her own happiness. Thank you for listening to my end of year speech. I'm off now because it's my turn to bring the snacks for the annual meet and greet for the new frequenters of the clouds. I have a hundred and fifty full of on cases and cheesy tuna fillings to make, so I better go. Merry Tishmas, one and all, and have a happy new year. Thank you to Halfway's Hat for his speech. Hopefully next year he'll have a speech again. Summing up the year. Mm. Does it so well, doesn't he? He does. And don't forget, we do a summing up of the year too. Our review of the year, which will be out on the 15th of January. So yes. keep... It's a special episode. It's not part of our main episode. It's an extra. I haven't so done one of them for a while. We haven't. So uh, look out for that in January. I will. You'll be in it. Oh, great. I expect, you to be, I expect you to be part of it. Right, so continue our Christmas meals. We're at the Foxes now. They were also part of the Christmas celebrations, mm. which is nice. Where we had more of, like, Cherie's secrets about Isaac, mysterious Isaac. Yeah. And um, Amy overheard her, like, mention Isaac and spilled the tea to Denise when they were having a little chat. But, um, yeah, we still don't know who Isaac is, but Denise has, like, shooed Cherie away and Cherie seems to have done what she says. Well, Denise has put two and two together and made seven and just presumed that Isaac is a man that, sh- that mm. Cherie is having an She's affair with. She's a gold with. digger. Yeah. So, she, yeah, but she, her and Isaac have got this plan together where they're going to take all Patrick's money. I'm not sure how rich Patrick is. I mean, is there money for Patrick? I don't know, he just spent it on a salon, didn't he? Well, he, he didn't have any money because they, they couldn't afford a, a sofa. It was threadbare, remember? And then he won... <laughs> he, the only oh, yeah, way... he won like 15000 on... On a horse race. Yeah. The only way Patrick ever seems to have money is when he bets on something <laughs> and then just seems to just always win, don't, like, mm. do really well from it, but then gives it away on like a fool's errand every time. So when he won the money on the horse race, he gave it to uh, Mr. Murray. He gave it to Mr. Murray because mm, she Ted, yeah. to, to go off Mitch to Australia and Mitch stole the money, which he still hasn't paid back. And then he sold his records and again gave <laughs> it to Denise to start a salon, which seems to be booming. Mm. Goodness knows how. And and again, so, so it's not really the gold digging isn't with Patrick. Cherie should be starting having an affair with Denise because surely she's the one with the money. It's all in Patrick's name, isn't it? Like the salon is. Oh, so the Denise house is, is working for Patrick then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, like, I don't know what they is, but I don't see how he can have that much money. No, I can't. Really? But, but like, to warrant him, to warrant this grand plan where she's like married to another man. Waiting and, for him to die. Waiting for him to die, yeah. Which could take years. Yeah, he's quite lively. Mm. Um, but I don't, that's not what Isaac is. It's, it's obviously not that at all. No. It's something else, but it's obviously just trying to work out what that is. Um, Because when Denise confronted her, she said, oh, you've got another man. But like the way Cherie replied, she was like, yes, there is a man. But she didn't say not. Well, she didn't say a she relationship didn't confirm what or, the relationship was. Yeah, with this man. she didn't say anything like that, mm. and she kind of like was quite sad by the whole thing, and she kissed Patrick goodbye and just left. Yeah, she didn't fight, did she? She didn't kind of. There was nothing stopping her from telling the truth if it mm. wasn't anything, you know, wrong with her relationship with Isaac. So it seemed very strange that she just kind of admitted defeat and left. Mm. Like she didn't. It's like Isaac is a dirty little secret, but not what Denise believes him to be, which is yeah. obviously the so, husband or boyfriend. Any ideas what that might be? 
Who are the kids? Why? I'm presuming he's like her son or something like that. But he's maybe he's involved with like something like being in prison or he's only got, got a past that Cherie doesn't really want that opened up. It's, it's, a, it's a side to her that she doesn't mm. really want a lot of people to know. But obviously because it's her son or her perhaps her cousin or something, someone who's family to her, she still feels like she has to support him. Mm. But it's she odd. still wants to keep him at arm's It's odd how she keeps saying like, oh, not yet. Not mm. ready yet. Mm. But that's what I mean. If it's someone who she wants to kind of gradually get Patrick and Denise to accept, mm. then perhaps he's he's someone who's got a past that she wants to just kind of make the blow much softer when he does appear. Well, maybe it's something to do with Denise. Like maybe she's saying not yet because she knows that she's not friends with Denise yet. <laughs> like mm. Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. It's hard to work out what it could be. I mean, Isaac could be a code. And maybe Isaac is um, Lucas or this the, Lucas's son or something like that. Somehow related to mm. that that side of. Or these. maybe he he's the family that have adopted her her and Phil's kid or something. Maybe I don't. Oh know. God, yeah, yeah. And maybe Isaac that. is like his new name, like the person they adopted, the boy. I but yeah, know. but the kid wouldn't be old enough to want to. No, I mean to, to make a mobile phone call. <laughs> no, but we don't know who she's talking to. We don't know who's talking to either. The, the foster not. parents of yeah. of the child. I don't know. I'm just trying to work out what it could be. Because I did it... have a theory that it could be because Cherie and Patrick apparently knew each other like years and years and years ago, didn't they? When they rekindled when he was on holiday, and that's why they got married. Yeah, but he's she's much younger than him, isn't she? Mm. So she must have been very young when Patrick first knew her. Yeah, but maybe she had a kid with him and he didn't know. Oh, like that. oh but another another Truman yeah. is on the mitt. Oh well, yeah, that could be true. That'd be mm. interesting. I have a theory. If that is true, I'm wondering if it could be they had she had a girl and she's actually transitioned to a man called Isaac. And oh, that's right. why she doesn't want to tell Patrick yet. I don't know. Something like that. Well, could be interesting. Well, she, she well not that she's ashamed of it. She no, but she's now Patrick. Finds it difficult to re- yeah. Oh, yeah. How we'd react yeah. to it because that could be interesting for Patrick a storyline like that. Mm. I mean, I was I was really interested in the fact that they gave Patrick such a, a large storyline. Well, a storyline, yeah, it more was than good. one line but over Christmas as well, which mm. is which is like the prime time for people. Like you put, you know, you throw the big stories in. So it was interesting they made the Patrick story a story that they want to keep as note for the next year for 2020. Mm. So it's obviously something they want to explore further. And it was sweet how he said like he obviously suffered quite. He was quite lonely. Mm. Like he said, that was my last chance of happiness and you've ruined it to Denise. Yeah. But he did forgive Denise in the end. Mm. And, um, After she... Lola. Well, no. She's like an 80-year-old woman, Lola, <laughs> sitting around. <laughs> she just goes to people one by giving one. Giving people advice. She did it with Karen as well, didn't she? She went, oh, you, you know, I may be a Mitchell, but I'm also a mum. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lola, calm down. Yeah, she is, isn't she? She's like an elderly woman mm. with her fish and chips. <laughs> like She just bought her fish and chips and she walked down the market with Patrick. But um, bless Denise. Denise said, you know, I'll look after you, Patrick. And um, I think Patrick felt a bit more reassured of that. I loved the uh, Truman Christmas dinner when Kim was on the laptop and uh, Patrick oh, put cameo. The, was it Jack put the plate uh, put the potato on the plate in front of it was the baby chair as well wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was and a they, kid, but I can't think who it would have been. A, Ricky, maybe I think. Yeah, Ricky but, and Amy were there, weren't they? Yeah, and and the, the laptop was on the top of this baby chair, this mm. high chair, and she put the plate in front, and Kim just literally off the ca- off the screen camera put the fork forward and then brought it back and it had the potato <laughs> on it. I thought that was brilliant. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. She's loving her life in Scotland, isn't she, old Kim? Yep, yep. She's doing well up there. Mm. She's coming... Well, spoiler alert, if anyone who doesn't know this, but she is coming back down soon, isn't she? Well, obviously. Back down south. She's on the screen, isn't she? Mm. It's good to see Kim again. I'm really pleased to see Kim again. I'm hoping that maybe some love for Kim. Maybe she's going to bring a man down with her. Perhaps even... Isaac. Well, that's what I was about to say. Perhaps even a gay man. Maybe Isaac is gay. Oh. And that's why Cherie wanted to kind of just Maybe. bring Patrick. So if Patrick is that's Patrick's son. Oh, yeah. Because you don't know how Patrick would react, really. I don't, I I don't, don't think, think Patrick would mind, would he? I don't know. He seems like a rainbow flag for Didn't fly see him at me. Pride. Well, he was busy. Well, he wasn't there, I don't think, was he? He was still don't away know, with Cherie, remember. I think. Oh, Ted really? was at Pride. Ted was having a whale yeah, of a Ted time was, Pride. Patrick wasn't. <laughs> no. It but, says everything. No, I don't think I don't think there was any cruel intention behind it. No. Right, another storyline we're going to go on to is the Slaters, who basically had the storyline of the Vicar of Dibley Christmas special for <laughs> our elder viewers listening. Oh, are you? I remember that episode fondly. Exactly. Why... Elder <laughs> viewers. How dare you? No, it's repeated at Christmas, so people should know it. But... It's repeated endlessly. It's on yeah. a loop on Christmas Day. <laughs> so they, they had enough of being barricaded in their house, so they thought, no, we're going to go... Well, they ran out of food as well. They had nothing to eat. They were just... Mo had pretty much cleared them out. Mm. Trish but... was doing push-ups. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Desperate. 
<laughs> yeah, he needed to get some exercise doing. They had um, no electricity. Mm. They had their electricity turned off. They didn't have an iPhone to play or watch television. Oh, yeah, that was it. Because she was like leaving a message for Daniel saying, my phone might die. Mm. They could have just went to Stacey's and her new fellas for Christmas, couldn't they? Yeah, they could have. That's why <laughs> Stacey didn't invite them. She's too busy with a new man. Um, So Kat went out to basically... Her, Mo and Kush all went out to find someone to bring the herd in for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> And they ended up getting like three dinners, I think, in the end. It they was went three. to the Taylors. The Bills. The Bills. Who's the third one? Someone who Kush found. Can't remember who it was. I don't remember. I'll let you think about that while we carry on. <laughs> um, but yeah, they basically just had loads of dinners. and Yeah, they, were, they hopped it, really. from one to the next, didn't they? Mm. They started off in the Vic. Perhaps it was a free drink in the Vic, the first one, or with Mick and Linda. Oh, maybe. Perhaps something like that. But yeah, and because the Panacea brothers had smoked them out essentially because they, mm. they turn off the electricity and they had nothing to eat or drink but correct was like really angry he was like no you do not do that to our tenants no jags. no not just jags <laughs> vinnie as well vinnie was involved vinnie. but it was jags idea and jags mm. was so pleased with himself wasn't he, he was like you yeah, guess what i did yeah <laughs> nice one jags thumbs yeah, up because correct obviously really feels for gene mm-hmm. and that was another thing that was left i'm maybe thinking for the um flashback episode where he said oh gene just a minute I want to say something to you. And then it cut away. And we didn't see Gene again. Oh, really? I, so I don't know. Is there something like he's going to say something about the house or Well, Well, he's already agreed now that they're going to be able to rent there without the hike as well. So there's mm. not going to be any price increase. I mean, it's miraculous how he's basically had this change of heart. It was, yeah. it was almost like they'd wrote a small plot for the Slaters just to remind you that they were still there. <laughs> I mean, it's kind nice of... they had a nice Christmas for once, though. Like, they had a great Christmas. Yeah, the finally, a wonderful time. Yeah, I know. It's after last year, they needed some kind of happiness, mm. didn't they? Really. But I um, mean, yeah, the bills was nice. Nice and nice party. Kathy was loving it. Bill's party. Sherry. Oh, but Kathy was drinking all Christmas again, <laughs> wasn't she? I mean, she's really drinking. <laughs> she, mm. Old Kathy. I'm gonna, so, we're a bit she loves worried it, about. Though. Mm. Letting her air down. Playing Monopoly. Do you think they're playing EastEnders Monopoly? I very much hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy was like, I'll be myself. Yeah. I'll play the uh, sandwich from the uh, the Kathy. <laughs> what are the pieces on the uh, East End's Monopoly? I think it's like the dog doorstep. Oh, what, the one that hit Den? Yeah, yeah. Arthur's Bench. Okay, great. Can't remember the other ones. The, the Queen Vic Bust, I think, is one. Okay. I can't remember. I know that they don't have um, houses and hotels. They have houses and market stalls. Oh, do they? Yeah. So I think the green, I think the houses are the market stalls and then the hotels are the houses. Mm. Something along those lines. Or pubs. Something like that, you know. Fun game. Mm. But um, that was the Slaters, really. They just had their happy Christmas. Mm. They were loving it. They got their house, paying the same rent. Bish bosh job done. Panacea's yet again. Mm, nothing. No. Not really anything to know. I quite liked Karat, actually, this episode for once. You know my feelings of Karat. <laughs> what, his sexy beard? Mm. Yeah, Vinny. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not deny it. No, yes, I nothing think else to say. Just... I think he's hot. <laughs> yes, what about his character? I, well, look, right, you... you... I think she Martin can do heart. no wrong because you think he's hot. <laughs> and yeah, Karat's shown he's got a kind heart. And mm. But even when he's not kind, he's a bit, you know, a bit mean and moody. Yeah. And he loves Gene. He's a Gene fan. So. And he's a Gene fan. So him and I are on board with that mm. as well. I'm on board with Karat. <laughs> So the last storyline of the week is the Carters, the heart of the Vic. And um, one of my favourite scenes this week we had during the ball and chain meal. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? It was so good when she was getting, like, Linda was getting more and more drunk over Ruby because she was all, like, angry with her because she had to wear that outfit. Oh, the sexy Santa outfit. Yeah. And she agreed with Ruby that they both wear it. And Ruby was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, Ruby was a bit bitchy, wasn't she? When they invited her for the meal, when she said to Max, we'll just we'll come over, do it for an hour, and then leave again. We'll make mm. excuses. Oh, but Linda and Mick were the same, though. So they yeah. both didn't want to do it. Both couples were, like, not looking forward to it. But Linda particularly wasn't. And I loved the, the, the uh, camera work and the mm. cinematography of the whole scene when, as she got more and more progressively drunk, the uh, surroundings around her got more and more blurred and the lines mm. got more distorted. And you just focused on her. And the, the camera got closer and closer to her face and you focused on her just almost being more and more detached from the world that she's you know in and uh, making herself feel more isolated by her behavior i just loved it it was such a good scene mm. i love her face when she's drinking and she has that i'm getting drunk like there's something she does with her like she frowns funny but she, yeah. it's, just, it's just so good and the things she was saying was really horrible and mean oh so nasty to ruby wasn't she and, yeah yeah but she was making a fool of herself at the same time but it was all about mm. her being a fool it was so well done 
Do you think actors, when they uh, audition for EastEnders, have to show that like, they can show drunk very well? Because every actor in EastEnders <laughs> yeah, plays drunk job, incredibly they? well. Mm. All of them do, in mm. their own little way. Mm. Yeah, very good. But um, she went on like a bender and she collapsed on Christmas Day and lovely Lee turned up out of nowhere to yeah. welcome his mum home. Yeah, hi mum, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Which was meant to be a surprise, wasn't it, by Mick for yeah a homecoming i think it was mick's plan was maybe she wouldn't drink if she saw her son there because mm. linda is very much family orientated as we yeah, learned at the end of the league. week yeah exactly and she likes having her family around her and perhaps that's another thing that she's missing that she doesn't have her sons or her daughter mm. near it's her it's amazing how much of a difference it made just having lee in that family unit mm. like it made the car to suddenly feel full again just having that one kid back in the house it's it, i've because without Lee, it feels so Shirley, Tina, Mick and Linda, yeah. like two separate pairs. But having him plopped in, it kind of brought the whole family. It made them current again. It made mm. them like they were the part of the fabric of the square again by having more of them mm. there. It's nice to see him back, old Lee. I like, oh, yeah. I, the stubble. I would happily have Lee back. He looked good and and he's ready. <laughs> he, no, again, I sound such a pervert. He, but he did look good. He does look good, yes. His vegan diet. Mm. It, See, it pays off. And uh, he just, he I don't know, he just, for me, because he, it's like, you know when you wash a sheet? So you get a sheet or clothing, no. it's, just hang with me here. When the clothes get dirty and dirty and dirtier, mm. and like it's like a character on EastEnders, that sometimes so much happens to a character that it just gets so dirty that you can't see what it used to be, what the character was before. Mm. And so sometimes when you take them away or give that piece of clothing some wash... And they come back much cleaner, which is what Lee has become. You can now, you can, you can see him appreciate now, him. appreciate him of what he used to be from the ba- from the beginning again. And so he's ready for more stories. So if they were to bring Lee back, I think he's ready now to have more stories mm. because he's been able to be washed. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. Does understand. anyone get my analogy? Yes. But that's what I mean, I mean to say. So, it, you know, it was nice seeing Lee back. And I think that. Uh, he's not gone yet. He's still in more episodes. I'd like him to stay for a long time. I would. <laughs> yeah, well, he's just Give him filmed... a year contract. Yeah, that's what I'm should. saying. He keeps saying on Twitter, um, you'll be seeing lots of me soon. Wink, we're not saying what he's doing. So but, maybe he's back. But also, know. don't you think that we, everyone wants the Carters to stay in the Vic? But there's the danger that obviously Linda and Mick, it, it's going to be very difficult to keep them in the Vic, as we've discussed already, mm-hmm. because of Linda's alcoholism problem. So why doesn't Lee take over the Vic with Sophie. So they could girlfriend. Yeah, they could become managers of the Vic and then Mick and Linda can take a back step and just go and move into maybe one of Jack's flats or something and live in there yeah, with Ollie. Do so. And let Lee and Sophie then be the new head of the square. And so the Carters are still in the Vic, but Mick <laughs> and Linda Carter Junior. Yeah, and Mick and Linda still have a hand in it, but not but 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 it makes better sense because Linda can't drink so mm. she could... i could picture lee behind the bar actually mm. a bit danny Dyer, like young danny yeah, diary yeah really well because well, he again he looks he's got the same eyes as danny Dyer. i've always thought that they've got the mm. same kind of brown twinkly eyes yeah so yeah and he's on really good terms with like everyone on the the actor i mean he's on yeah. good terms with everyone on the show mm. so yeah bring him back might yeah. as well bring back come out of dover no one wants to live in dover <laughs> no offense to dovians but um come down to the east end come back and uh yeah mm. take over the vic don't you think that would work out no, well? No, I can see Lee. Yeah, yeah I can see him. Because he's he looks like he's grown up since we last saw him. Mm. And he's a lot calmer. And he's like the carter who's come in and calms the house down. Mm. So, yeah, it's nice that he's done that. From when we last saw him, when he was at such a low... Oh, he's just point. awful. He's so sad. And, he would, and also, it would be nice for him to talk to Bex. Because they've both been on a road of... Mm. suicide and depression i so, find it a shame that i don't it doesn't look like he's gonna share any scenes with callum because if he comes off so that's a bit of a shame like because they've got the whole carter history together yeah yeah it's true but, you know he has to come back give him a year contract <laughs> john sen and kate oates if you're listening yeah he'll say yes i'm sure he will give him a year contract of course he will <laughs> If, 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 if someone knocked on my door yet tomorrow and said, we not that I have any acting experience whatsoever, but said, do you want to do a year Hello. contract with East End? Hoy. Do you want to do, well, in Jack's case. <laughs> Wee. Um, do you want to do a year contract with East Enders? I'll be like, yes, I do. Thank you very much. Where do I sign? So, of course, he'd, he'd if want... It, if you have a year contract, you can't do the podcast. We've learned that. Oh, no, that's true. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we're meant to be talking about Linda and her... her she dis- got drunk. She got drunk outside yeah. the Argy Bargy. Yeah, with a bottle of gin that she stole from, <laughs> yeah, from the hospital, which was a gift to someone in the hospital. <laughs> Christmas Day gift. Yeah, Merry gin. Christmas. Here's a litre of gin. <laughs> Joy. And then she went missing. 
mm-hmm. from the Aji Baji um, until the next day where we saw her with blood on her shoe and she was very bags under her eyes. She was a bit disheveled yeah. and upset oh, about things that happened. Oh, she was heavily hung over. Yeah. Mm. And she'd obviously witnessed things mm-hmm. that we don't know. Mm-hmm. So um, not much else to say really because we don't know what else well, she did. We won't know until the flashback episode. No. Everything leads to this blooming flashback episode. Mm. But it's exciting, isn't it? I'm so looking forward it to this is. flashback and episode. And she hasn't drunk since then. Like she nearly drinks. She said to make it's water and it wasn't. And they had a little chat but she and tipped she it tipped it away. It away. Yeah. So. And, and, and uh, Ikra had ordered a wine for Ash. Mm. But then she had to dash out quickly. And again, Linda looked at it. But... Didn't drink it. Presumably didn't drink it. And there was a brilliant scene when they're watching the Penguin documentary on their bed while Sharon and Shirley are having their slagging (laughs) match. And it was Tina, Mick, Linda and uh, Lee all sat on the bed together. And Lady Di. And Lady Di. Made a rare appearance. It was such a... It was so nice. As you said, it was so nice seeing this unit again. Mm. I mean, if Lee comes back, then shouldn't Nancy come back as well? Yeah, that means Tamwa has to come back. And again, you don't know what's they happening just got in Australia. Married. Yeah, but this is EastEnders. <laughs> Something's happened. Yeah, I'd love to see her back. I love mm. um, Nancy, but she's in Holby or whatever. And um, and Johnny maybe no. <laughs> recast. Kate Re- likes yeah, recast. recast Johnny. Not the, the first one. We'll bring back the original, but not Johnny number two. <laughs> yeah, no, not him. Johnny two. <laughs> He looked an old granny, didn't he? The other one. He's a blooming gold jacket. It's like, how can we make money in the Vic? Oh, have a quiz night. <laughs> Nothing else to say to Linda because we don't know what happened to her. It's all secret. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about Linda Mm. next week. But very good of her drunk scenes. I like them and I enjoyed them. Mm -hmm, Me too. I'm just hoping that's not like them being like, that's the end of her alcohol storyline. No, I I don't know. Like I say, there's a a more. There's a long road ahead. They didn't just suddenly stop. Mm. The Bex effect. Let's hope it's not the Bex effect and they just forget about her and then move on. (laughs) But there you go. We made it. That's the Christmas week. Extravaganza. <laughs> Extravaganza. I don't think we've missed anything. If we have, then tough. Well, but if we have, get in touch and we can talk to you. Um... We did like a live thing as well. So if everyone wants even more of us talking about it, we did a live thing on our Twitter. You can listen back to that. Oh, yeah. And uh, well, half an hour. Yeah. Well, talking about social media and messages and all that, I think it's time we have a bit of a gossip and uh, see yeah. who won the week. Finish the show. You know me, I ain't want to gossip. It's the end of the show and it's time for I Ain't Want to Gossip and Who Won the Week, where we read out your tweets, your messages on Instagram and our Facebook group page and we have a look at stories that happened in the past. However, because it's Christmas week, Ben is going to do things a little bit differently as we Mm. jump on board the Ben train. (laughs) Well, there's no point doing this time last year for this because it's Christmas week. We've done this time last year though. Well, yes, but everyone knows what happens at Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I've got a video on YouTube instead. Yes. Which explores a certain Boxing Day in 1989. So go have a look at that if you want a little nostalgia kick. I very much recommend everyone does have a look at it because it's, it's just an outstanding episode. <laughs> and uh, Ben gives his unique commentary on it. So mm. definitely have a listen or well, watch on it on YouTube. All the details I'll say at the end of the show. Of course. Um, so birthdays and deaths, as you might imagine, it's quite the list for Christmas week. So I'm going to run through these very quickly. Right, birthdays. 25th December 1920, Nana Moon was born. Ah, the day of Jesus' birth. (laughs) 28th December 1942, Pat Evans was born. So Pat's birthday. Mm. 25th of December 1983, Sean Slater was born. Sean? Christmas baby, apparently. And he's the same age as me. Mm, Giving bits away there, aren't you? (laughs) Uh, 25th of December, 1985, uh, Nikki DeMarco was born. (laughs) The DeMarcos. Mm. Long long forgotten. (laughs) 27th of December, 1987, Dean Wicks was born. Mm, Dean. Dean, what's he up to? He needs a bit of a comeback, doesn't he? In prison? No, he's not. He's out. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, he came out, didn't yeah. he? Oh, he's, he, he can come back and ruin Linda's life. I was going to say, more. that's going to make Linda's <laughs> life worse. I bet they do as well. That's yeah. the kind of nasty thing they would do. <laughs> right. 26th of December, 1989, Stephen Beale was born. Oh. That's the episode where I review Boxing Day episode. Stephen Beale. Mm. Take away him. from us too young. 25th December 2015, Arthur Fowler Jr. was born. Gosh, okay. 29th December 2017, Abby Branning Jr. was born. Baby Branning, baby mm. Abby. Just when Abby died. Toddler Abby now. Yeah. Uh, 24th December 2018, Mika Fox Hubbard was born with the hands of Phil. Yeah. In the minute mart. Again, what a, what a, what a difference a year makes. <laughs> Last year, Phil was contorting his face in all kinds yeah, of positions. All sorts of fun, wasn't he? Yeah, and now he's 
angry as anything. Right, it's on to deaths now. Oh, good. Oh, right. good. <laughs> uh, 25th of December. A lot of these will be 25th of December. 25th of December 2002, Jamie Mitchell died. Yes, at the hands of Martin. 23rd of December 2004, Paul Truman died, allegedly off screen. Oh, yeah, he got in a taxi and then... Like, a bit stabbed. Or, a, a bit like Vincent. Yeah, I was about to say, a bit like Vincent. You don't really know. You just presumed he has. Mm. Well, he had to identify his body later. So. Oh, so he, he definitely is. But, but Vincent, we don't really know. No. Uh, 25th of December 2006, Pauline Fowler died. Oh, in, in the at garden. The hands of Sonia. <laughs> yep, yep, with the fruit bowl. <laughs> Uh, 25th of December 2009, Archie Mitchell died. That's right. Stacy, yeah, yeah. Stacy uh, caused someone else's death indirectly too. <laughs> oh, poor Bradley. Uh, 25th of December again, mm. 2011 this time. It's every other year, it seems. Mm-hmm. Um, Yusef Khan died. That's when he died in the fire, who was the original husband of Sue's wife. Oh, Zainab. that's right. That's right. 25th of December 2012, <laughs> Derek Branning died. No one cares about him. I know, I'm trying to think Derek He's Branning. He's like the ugly... Branning brother. Who oh, liked... the one who slept with Cat. Yeah. Yeah. Who did Cat? Uh, 25th <laughs> of December 2015, Fat Boy died and got crushed in a car. He died over Christmas? Yeah, Christmas Day 2015, he got crushed. Oh, I always thought it was sad because you learned that Fat Boy didn't like enclosed spaces. So mm. not only did he die a horrific death, but he also died. Yeah, it was like 48 hours before that weren't great. Yeah. In, yeah. in a panic state. Oh my God. I'm, actually, my stomach turned mm. when you said that. But he might still be alive. Maybe Doc can bring it up. Yep. Where's my letters from Arthur? Yeah, he still gets letters, doesn't she? Well, no, because Arthur. Um... Vincent's dead now, allegedly. That would be. Oh, imagine if next year, when Kim returns. What, they get a letter from Fat Boy yeah. and Vincent's alive. And so then. Vincent's still alive. Mm-hmm. Writers, give us 50 quid and we'll let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that was all the births and deaths of East End's history over Christmas. Quite a few. Good night. <laughs> yes, and off. <laughs> Uh, right, so there's been there's been a couple of polls this week, so I'm going to storm through these. So the first poll we do, we do every year, and that is who won Christmas Day. So we ask you, of the four main soaps in the UK, mm-hmm. who had the best Christmas Day episode? Last year, only just EastEnders won, and then it was closely followed by Emmerdale, Coronation Street, and then we added... Hollyoaks didn't have one last year, so we did <laughs> Neighbours. What? Uh, Neighbours had a Christmas episode. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hollyoaks did this year, but it but was like Holly really Oaks... early, like two weeks early. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's Hollyoaks. <laughs> but Hollyoaks did have one this year, and Seen we watched the New it. Year's episode of Hollyoaks already. Yeah, we have, haven't we? The yeah. flashback. There's another Flash flashback. Forward. Flash forward. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because they're, they're you're showing you what happens forward. in the year. Lots of drugs, I found. Mm. Drugs and children. Evie and Jack and um, thingy there from EastEnders. Yeah, EastEnders have a lot to answer for <laughs> from this year. So anyway, so we asked you who won Christmas. Um, we. Obviously, we are an EastEnders podcast, but we try to make it as unbiased as we can by yes. we tweeting tag it. People we and... ta- tag people from different podcasts, um, including Conversation Street, which does a Conversation Street podcast, and also does soap magazines, and they retweet it on our behalf on their own page. So, although a lot of people might shout, well, you're an EastEnders podcast, so of course the result's going to be perhaps the way it's ended up. We do try our best to make it as unbiased as we can by releasing it when other soaps are out as well. Mm. I just want to, that's a disclaimer. I want to make that clear. So, four soaps Coronation Street, EastEnders, Emmerdale, and Hollyoaks. I don't even think you need to ask, but. Hollyoaks. <laughs> no, sadly not. But they didn't come last. Oh, good. So, in first position, who won Christmas Day this EastEnders, year? EastEnders, Tishmas. East- Tishmas, the EastEnders Tishadine. this year, 62%. Ooh. So much greater majority this year. Coronation Street came second this year with 29%. Really? I saw that episode, it's not good. Well, a lot of people disagree with you. I've seen a lot okay. of positive things. <laughs> um, third place was Hollyoaks with 5%. Lovely. The New Year's was better. Mm. And then Emmerdale. Oh, last. I, which, if anyone on ITV is listening to this, we'll be very pleased to hear with 4%. It was a quiet Christmas at Emmerdale, though. I know, we watched bits of it, didn't we? And we were a bit like... Very dull. This is very, yeah, this is much. Uh, a few comments based on our Who Won the Christmas Day Crown Soap poll. At EastEnders Fan 21 said, EastEnders for me was fantastic. Having more than one story makes it on the edge of your seat stuff. Mm-hmm. Good mix. At Soap Wiki John said, in my opinion, all four were solid, but EastEnders was the most epic and traditional of the bunch and made the most impact. Yes. At- Yes. At Mac underscore that said, Corey is a million times better than EastEnders. It's not even close. EastEnders is just a lot of shouting. It is. But then, yeah, but if you, you actually <laughs> watch the Corey episode, it was awful. It was like the Hunter Siege one, but really done really bad. EastEnders have had like three Christmas episodes this year. The gun, Gunman mm. in the Vic, the Mail Crash and Christmas. Oh, well, also, I thought when you were saying three Christmas episodes, to be fair, the whole Christmas has been great. It was Christmas Day, Boxing Day mm. and last night. And Christmas Eve, to be fair. It's and been a New good Year's week. is Christmas Day as well. 
So, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we've got two Christmas Day episodes. If something's popular, why not ride it? That's what they say. <laughs> thank you. There was lots of other comments, and um, thank you for everyone who voted. Um, we'll probably end up doing the same next year, so keep an eye out on the 25th of December, 2020, mm. and you'll see a poll for that. So, our main poll, Who Won the Week, for this week on EastEnders, there were four stories. As always, you can vote on our Twitter, Instagram, and our Facebook group accounts. And the four stories were Sonia, Hills, Martin. Oh, normally you react to these. Hills Martin. Yeah, heals him. Oh, heals. Oh, I see. With her hands. Healing her hands. Her gentle hands. NHS. <laughs> and her NHS Yeah, hands. I'd vote for that. Mitchell's Family Matters. Oh, yeah, obviously. Grey's Vowed Out. No. Do you like that? I was quite pleased with that one. Found Out, Vowed Out. Mm. The fact that I have to explain them isn't good. <laughs> uh, and Cherie's Christmas Leave. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, good. Uh, th- thanks for permission. Okay, so this time we'll do them in reverse order. So what do you think came last? Grey and Chantal. Correct. With 5% of the vote. Third? Cherie. Correct. With 7% of the vote. <laughs> Second place? Very low. Sonia Heels. Yes, with 10% of the vote. So an out and out winner, Mitchell Family Matters, won with 78% of the <laughs> vote, which is a good sign because it means it was a story that people were invested in and so people enjoyed and liked well, it's the, the best of a bad bunch. I disagree. I think it was <laughs> no, the best of a very good bunch. It was very good. Lots of really strong stories. Hey, you know what? We had lots of comments. Do you want to hear some? Yes. On... If you're quick. I'm always quick. You know that. <laughs> on twitter martin's on... not no, no he lasts all night yeah till dawn broke <laughs> and you know the nights have been dark up until about seven thirty. so yeah good for him at e kitchener 97 said i ca- i still can't get over louise's twist i really wasn't expecting that but i was expecting her to forgive keanu and just leave with him i'm also shocked by dennis turning on sharon as well looking forward to the flashback episode on new year's no, Dennis is an idiot. Who would turn on Sharon, eh, if she was your mum? I wouldn't. No. I'd love her. On our Facebook group, Tamlin Steele said, I can't cope. Think the murder was staged and that Keanu and Lou will eventually run away to Portugal. Mm-hmm. Theory. We like a theory, don't we? Ali Knack. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I'm appalled by Ben's continued daddy's issues, as if this situation will make Phil respect him more. Callum is totally better off without Ben. That's a, that's a strong opinion, that Callum and Ben shouldn't be together. Mm, I'm fine for it at the moment, actually. Yeah. But eventually go back together. But like I say, Callum needs his hoe time. Ho time. <laughs> Ace, Ace Avery on our Facebook said, Steve McFadden and Letitia Dean confrontation scene was pure gold. They need more scenes like that. Mm, it was good. Three exclamation marks. They they obviously love doing them as well. Like oh, yeah. Two, so. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can Just tell. More. They're having fun doing those scenes. They like you can tell they like doing scenes together. But also, when they're happy, because whenever they're doing the scenes, when he's like smacking her on the bum and taking her upstairs, mm. like the, the cries of ec- <laughs> ecstasy. On our Twitter, at Creative Muffin said a little bit of a letdown for me, but I'm assuming after Christmas Day's super explosive episode, they're holding the big stuff for the flashback episode to see what happens from others' perspective. Mm. I agree. Like, oh. they, like Friday episode, you were, you could tell they were eking out ready for New Year's, aren't they? Mm. At Yasmin A4658013. Find her on Twitter. She'll be appreciate the like. Uh, it says, about time Shirley was given a proper storyline. She's just always hanging around, not doing much at all. She's always had that sharp tongue. Yeah, I didn't like that. When she was really horrible to Sharon and Linda in like, the same sentence. Mm. It's like, all right, Shirley. Yeah, she never down. used to be that. I don't know. There's just nothing to her at the moment, is there? She yeah. just says her line and... The scenes She's she had suspicious. with Jean were nice. Perhaps they need to bring that back. Mm. Or like you said about her and Sharon maybe becoming a, a friendship mm. group. Amanda Layton said on our YouTube, that's right, I'm getting comments from YouTube now, mm-hmm. Callum had a lucky escape from Ben after what he did on Christmas Day. That's right. He's yeah. a good boy. He's a good boy. Sophie Martin has said, I think Patrick's being silly blaming Denise. I would have thought personally that he would have had more belief in her. Yeah, he was very quick, but he just didn't want to believe sure he could leave him, did he? So... No, he didn't want to believe because he doesn't want to be lonely, does he? Lonely guy. Lonely at Christmas. Easy target for those salesmen that come to your door and try to sell you one of those seats that help you stand up. Uh, and finally, Hannah Jow said that she hated it. What? It. Everything. The whole, everything? Yeah, the whole lot. She didn't like Christmas. Or even Tish Dean. <laughs> Just it. It, as in encompassing the whole of Christmas. Hated. Mm, how rude. Well, everyone's entitled to an opinion. <laughs> And also, if you want to know any of information or just find a kind of like a main central station place to find us, just go to www.wolfordweekly.com. 
wolfordweekly.com because all the links are on there to everything and so yeah just go to wolfordweekly.com and you can find all our links yeah. on our facebook our twitter and our instagram everything. and our youtube the whole kick of boodle is all on there so, so that's you know, easier for that's me. a safe from there. now on yeah just do that so from now on i'll just say just go to wolfordweekly.com yeah. and find us there and you can Easy. also find our merch store there which has balum exclusive merch and i do believe there might be a discount for the new year but don't hold me on that because i haven't double checked that just yet so if you one... buy merch balum get back together so I hear. Mm. Every like, every like gets Balan, gets so Balan Balan closer fairy. together. <laughs> it's a Balan fairy come back together. So I uh, hope you guys have had a great Christmas. Can't wait for you guys to listen to us again in the new year. Have a good one. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Merry Tishmas. And that's it. Goodbye. I'm going to go to the Argy Bargy. <laughs>